So Matt, so tell us sort of the tra transformation of what a media agency is, at least what IPG is, to become more product focused. What does that mean? Uh, well, look, the transformation is kind of multi-dimensional in a couple of respects. The first is we're actually trying to change the way we work with clients. So moving from this kind of set and forget way that media agencies have historically worked, you'd go away, you'd plan a campaign, you'd buy a campaign, you'd wait for the campaign to finish and measure whether it had been successful and then you'd do it all again. Um, to being a more dynamic organisation. So actually starting to really understand how media is performing in real time, not just across paid media, but across every touch point that a client might have. So redefining what media really is to, to include anything that touches a consumer, whether that be paid media or otherwise, it's all fair game in the sense that we're, we're looking to plan across the whole ecosystem of media. So that's uh, generated, I'm sure, by the needs of the marketplace and, and brands in particular, your customers, what are they looking for and how does this new yeah. model serve them? Well, the first thing to say is that, that paid media, generally speaking, is becoming less and less effective over time. So it's becoming more expensive, but it's not necessarily delivering the same audience and the same outcomes that it once used to. So the reason that we're kind of making that reorientation or we're pivoting away from be, being solely focused on paid media is just a function of clients wanting to get more for their money than they, than they get today. And one of the most efficient things that clients get value back from is their owned asset base. So things that they already own, the way I kind of describe it to clients is it's like renting an apartment or owning an apartment, assuming you don't have a mortgage on owning it. Um, when you rent it, you, you get value out of that apartment. You get to live in it for as long as you rent it. But the minute you stop paying rent on it, you're, you're thrown out into the street. And when you own an asset, that asset is providing value for you on an ongoing basis. So clients are starting to realize that if they can build their own assets with their own audiences and leverage those on an ongoing basis, the efficacy and the cost of managing those assets over time is less. So we're starting to look at how do we connect, of course paid media continues to be really important, but how do you connect it into a bigger ecosystem of channels that are more sustaining than just paid media on their own. So that's something that we're really focused on building out capabilities for. And I think a big reason why we've had the, some of the success that we've had over the last months to half a year to a year have, has been a function of really being able to start to connect those dots in a more efficient way than maybe we have in the past. I mean, look, the first thing probably to say is that this delineation between what is media and what is creativity is kind of blurred almost now to the point where you can't, you can't tell the difference. I mean, the content and the message have become, you know, fused in such a, or sorry, the, the, the channel and the message have fused in such a kind of a seamless way that it's really difficult to make that, make that separation anymore. Lots of people get hung up on, you know, will media agencies become the, the lead agencies? Will creative agencies be the lead agencies? Who's going to survive in the new world that is kind of this, this new paradigm of the two things just being seamlessly integrated with one another? And the way I view it with people, or the, what, what I say to people is, it's the strongest agency that will survive. It doesn't matter whether you've got creative over the top of the door or you've got media across the top of the door. If you're producing the best product, you'll survive. And if you're not, you won't. And so media agencies are realizing they've got to be good at the creative component of their planning just as much as they've got to be good at the rigor and the mathematics and the, and the strategy. And creative agencies are starting to realize they've got to be great at connecting their work with audiences through channels. And, and so we're both in that arms race to be able to get those competencies up. And the best will continue to be uh, surviving and going on to prosper and the ones that aren't very good won't. It's as simple as that. So we like to think of ourselves as just being focused on really getting ourselves to being as good in content and connections as we are in data, as we are in everything else that, that matters to clients. I mean, the first thing is Cannes is a creative festival. So the number one theme in Cannes every year is creativity and then everything else kind of falls in underneath that. So creativity is going to be the thing that everybody still continues to focus on. Um, from a media perspective, I think the really interesting challenge for agencies is how do they take all this great data and all the stuff that's going on in Cannes um, and actually connect it into an idea that works for the consumer. So I think data is kind of enriching creativity. Uh, it certainly is in media agencies and I think it is in creative agencies as well. So you're seeing this kind of enrichment of the creative process. A lot of people used to think data and rigor was like an enemy of creativity, that you know creativity was limited sometimes by structure and process. I think actually it's quite empowering and can actually improve the creative product. So I think you're going to be seeing judges and jurors looking for how data empowers great ideas, but still at the end of the day, how good is the idea? whether the idea is really powerful, game-changing, has some purpose behind it. And if, that, if all those things align, then that work's going to be successful. I think that continues to be the thing that most people focus on.